already feeling sad and uh, you know you're going to miss the lit fest um but don't worry we'll surely come back with a lot more surprises for you let's look uh, at some of the glimpses of uh, uh, what from where we began okay and uh, i'm sure we are going to connect very soon so uh, allow me to share something with you as we walk down and we lane today we are having dr preeti with us uh, but before that i would ask rakhi to say a few things about the lit fest and uh, she has surprises for you yes rakhi over to you yeah thanks thanks michela and uh, a warm welcome to dr preeti on our platform and uh, to all our participants for being here today is the last day of our lit fest and uh, i can surely say that this lit fest has uh, sown the seed uh for a lot of new opportunities for all of us and uh, the way we have been getting responses and the testimonials from teachers educators across that we we actually felt connected with the uh, cultures across the country as well as we uh, also found the need to go back to our own culture and understand uh, uh, the the importance of our own language our, our own mother tongue and also the importance of learning a new language so it's been an enriching experience for all of us uh, together over the past 8 uh, days and i'm sure that uh, we will definitely come up with uh, a Uh, a more exciting program for our lit fest too very soon and uh, meanwhile uh, i would also request all educators that if they would like the lit fest to uh, reach to the students across school uh, across the 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 country and you know uh, because of the experience that we have had we realized that you know this lit fest must go to the students to to be able to enrich their knowledge as well so in case uh, you do feel that yes you know this this thing should reach to the students and should be done for the schools as well then uh, please do uh, write back to us we would need your help to take this program to our schools and uh, we would need uh, you know uh, the entire community to to be together in this to be able to reach out to more and more students across the country so i hope that uh, you will be able to contribute in the lit fest too in a much larger way each and every participant Uh, will be able to contribute in a much larger way and uh, with this i will uh, look forward to all of you contributing yes yes, yes michelle yeah do you want to ask our participants how many would like to take it back to their students oh yeah yeah take Let's it back take to their call. schools and you know get their students involved so if you're interested kindly put it in the chat box we we'll put up put your name and uh, you know and your phone number or your email id so we can contact you uh if you really want to take the entire lit fest with of course uh the same or new speakers because we are going to incorporate many more languages so if you want your students to be a part of it and uh, of course uh, so let's get connected please put it in the chat if you really wish to put down your name and your email id and oh, we will take it from there uh yeah is that all right rakhi because yep. uh, as, as much as possible we would want many many students to be a part of it you've seen how we've uh, kept it up at a very very uh, minimal fee for all of uh, us to be able to enjoy the lit fest and uh, if we are going to extend it for students definitely we are always going to look into the uh, you know work towards the interest of the students and educators at large so we want the only objective of tht and the lit fest is to reach out to as many number of students because let learning happen as you all know tht did not stop 
uh, once the lockdown started, the learning happened and most of the sessions of THT I've attended and I've learned a lot. So thank you, Raki. Thank you, THT. And uh, I just... Uh, I think the, the whole uh, onus goes on the team uh, who has been working uh, yes. back in day and night. So I think uh, Anuja, Disha, if, if you know, we could just get them to say a hi to our audience being the last day. Yeah. Yes, Anuja and Disha, if you could uh, just say hi and please uh, accept our thanks, gratitude on behalf of all the participants. Hi. <laughs> hi. Hi. <laughs> yes. Thank so you, you all, the, all the videos and the creatives and the wonderful stories that uh, we have been seeing, it's thanks to her and uh, her uh, inputs and her suggestions and her beautification. So yes, that's the creative head at THT. Thank and you. Disha, who manages all the back end and the messages and uh, the, uh, the communication that happens via mails and SMSs and broadcasts is all thanks to Disha. Yeah. Or, and also Disha is the one who's going to give them their certificates, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you better be good with Disha. <laughs> yeah, she is the, the THT helpline, the helpline of THT. Admin head, yes. And yes, the admin head. So, yes. Um, Great. So we are ready to begin. Yes, let me allow me to introduce uh, Dr. Preeti Bhutani, who is a research scholar in French, PhD in social work, uh, author of around 45 French textbooks, that's quite a number, and help books used in schools in India, UAE, and uh, Sri Lanka. She's a teacher's trainer, and she has trained almost, I mean, more than 1,200 French teachers from all major cities of India. Uh, she's also the president of Prayat, Prayatna Educational Society, the video that you've been watching every day before the session started, and that the one that you watched today. And uh, this society uh, uh, is uh, promotes French in India since uh, 2003. They're also, they also organize international French competitions, educational trips to France, Quebec, and Pondicherry. Um, with um, having such a huge experience in the world of French, we are privileged to have Dr. Bhutani here with us. Over to you, Dr. Bhutani. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much, Shaila. Thank you so much, Raki. And yes. congratulations for such a wonderful journey that you've had throughout this week. Uh, congratulations to the entire team. And we are winding up today with uh, France and uh, the, one of the most beautiful country, and of course, my favorite not to mention. Uh, France is different for me than any other country because I believe that France is a mixture of tradition as well as modernity. Uh, many countries still keep the pace with tradition while going on towards modernity, but France has one of uh, what, France is one of them which has done that and continues to do that. So it's rich in culture, flourishing with architectural beauty. So we are going to discover a bit of France today, French culture and French language today. So let's see what it is. And I'm going to share my screen with you to, to be able to show you some uh, glimpse of the country. So I guess you are able to see my screen. Uh, today we are going to speak about attractions. When we talk about attractions, it is not just the monument, but what yeah, attracts us to France? Uh, why are we looking at France today? Uh, we are also going to talk about importance of French in India. And we are talking about importance of learning French and language in India. They are two different things. We are also going to talk about uh, French for us, when, can we learn, learn it very easily? Can we discuss today uh, what already we know in French? And then we'll be opening towards the question answer round also. Uh, so to begin with, everybody knows the Eiffel Tower. As soon as we talk about France, the first thing that comes to mind is the Eiffel Tower. Um, Eiffel Tower is one of the most uh, visited monument, but ironically, not one of the most preferred uh, monument by the French. We'll come to that later on. So uh, let's discover some of the other places also in France than Eiffel Tower. It's not just about Eiffel Tower, but there are many more beautiful places and monuments. Look at this one, for example. This is a cathedral of Notre Dame, which is located in Normandy in Rouen. And this is one of the most beautiful monument, most beautiful cathedral of 
France. And not many people know about it because uh, as a tourist, we stick to only touristic destination. So look at how high, how beautiful this is. Uh, under the blue sky, the colors are uh, bright enough to bring the beauty forward to us. Look at this place also. This is Etreta in Normandy, and this is not just a picture. It is a true destination that most of our students have already visited many a times. And you have seen many movies shot here also at this destination. This, that belongs to France as well. It is uh, Normandy again. Uh, look at this monument uh, in the form of a pyramid, actually. But it's not even a pyramid, because if you look at from the top, it's like a snail shaped building moving towards top and forming a church uh, called Mont Saint Michel. It is on the border of Brittany and uh, Normandy. So with this, you see that uh, not just Eiffel Tower, we have many more monuments. I cannot show all of them here. And this is French Riviera, we all know about because I think for it is one of the most famous destinations for Indian in France. Whenever we want to travel, we want to go to French Riviera, Nice and Cannes that we talk about. So this is that. And you have Alps monuments. So you can see that we have monuments, we have sea, we have uh, natural beauty, we have mountains. Uh, France is rich in all these beautiful aspects. So this is Alp and uh, in Alps, this place is called Megev. You can also do ski here in the winters. Ah, and look at this uh, beautiful picture with the houses at the back. These are houses, these buildings that you see, these are 16th century old houses. So in France, if you see modern buildings, you also find architecture or houses, uh, the places which are 300, 400 years ancient and they are still standing as it is. And they add to the beauty of the country for sure, because this is what we miss in India today probably. And this is what we want to go and look at the heritage, the cultural and the traditional aspect of a country. Talking about Eiffel Tower, as I said, this is irony that this is one of the most visited monument in, in, in France. Do you know that uh, Eiffel Tower was built in 1889? one year, a hundred year after the French Revolution. And this was the entry gate. It was only the entry gate for the universe, Universal Exposition. And the objective was to just keep it there for some time. And when the exposition is over, we are going to destroy it. But, and especially the French people, especially the Paris, Parisians, they wanted it to be destroyed immediately after the exposition was over because they thought this ugly iron structure is destroying the beauty of Paris. Paris where all the monuments are built in beautiful uh, yellow color, beige color, butter color stone uh, monuments. And this iron color structure, iron structure altogether was destroying the beauty of Paris. So they did not want to keep this monument at all. Um, it was only when they realized that they need a building, they need a structure to put the radio antennas on. And in Paris, we did not have any other building which was as high as the Eiffel Tower, almost 324 meters. Because in Paris, the high buildings were not in trend. Even later on in 21st century, we started building some high uh, buildings, the Gratziel uh, that we call them, skyscrapers, but this was not continued because uh, Parisians were against it. It was destroying the beauty. So uh, Eiffel Tower became the station for radio antenna and that's how it was saved. But nobody had imagined that this structure that people hated so much is going to be the symbol of France. And even today, uh, we know France from Eiffel Tower. You look at the image and you can immediately tell this is France and probably with other monuments which are more beautiful than Eiffel Tower or more famous for other tourists than us in uh, France, we will not be able to identify France. So this is about Eiffel Tower. So Eiffel Tower has a very interesting story. It was built in almost two years, uh, five months altogether. And the cost was also recovered in two years. It had millions of visitors every year. 
uh, talking about, we, this is what we talked about, the architectural beauty, you know, about the most uh, important monuments. We know Louvre, where we can see Mona Lisa, the most famous one. Uh, though people after visiting Mona Lisa are not very happy about why it is so popular because the size is not very huge. Uh, on the other hand, we have paintings in Louvre, which are as big as 10 feet by 10 feet. Uh, Mona Lisa would be like about two feet by one and a half feet and not more than that. So this is discouraging for the visitors to Louvre. Uh, moving on to food. What does France reserve for us in food? In food, we have uh, many interesting things. We have croissant that you all know probably because we can get internationalization. Globalization has in fact given one thing to all of us that sitting in our own country, we can taste the food of all the countries. So uh, that is why you don't have to go to France to eat croissant. You get them in India. You don't have to go to France to eat a uh, different kind of cheese that are offered there. They are available in India, but still they're not the same taste. They're not the same flavor. Uh, you feel much, uh, you feel the taste better when you eat it in the country of origin. Uh, so croissant, you have baguette, you have cheese, you have wine, macarons, pastries, snails, and ratatouille. The image that you see here is a ratatouille. It is one of the most famous French dish. And in fact, there is a movie made on this name ratatouille where the mouse is the chef. Uh, I'm sure you all must have watched this movie. It's very interesting even for kids as well as for adults. So this is ratatouille, which is made with different vegetables. A lot of vegetables are cut into sliced, very thinly sliced pieces with some sauce. And look at the arrangement. It takes a lot of time, but the arrangement is very beautiful and the taste is also amazing. Uh, croissant, baguette are all from pastry uh, department. So you have a lot of different kind of pastries which are available in France. And that is why probably a lot of people go to France to do a course in bakery and patisserie. That's what we call in uh, French. For wine, uh, France is famous for wine. We have red wine, we have white wine, we have pink wine, and we have uh, different varieties of all these wines that I'm talking about. And cheese, which is accompanied with almost all dishes and wine, especially at the dessert time, we have more than 350 varieties of cheese in France. Some of them are available in India also, but not all 350 that you can find. Let's have a look at a small video about uh, the food that we get in France. Just a quick video to give you an idea of uh, what is a croissant and uh, what is, okay. I'll just move on to my, First things first, the foundation of French society, the baguette. The French get their bread fresh every day. It's a staple table, whether that's at home or at a restaurant. If you're lucky enough to get your bread fresh out of the oven while it's still warm, it will change your life. All made with butter, which leads us to our next must eat, the almighty croissant. Compared to this, any croissant you ever eat in free France is like eating a sock. We should get the chocolate version of a croissant, which is a chocolate. So many incredible cheeses. You should get as many as you can while you're here. One of my favorites is Comte. The older, the better. So get the older. Yeah, the video seems to be stuck, I think. Tell them about how big of a piece you want, and they'll cut it for you. Yes, I was just wondering the same. It's actually relatively cheap, so try it yes, no, Macarons. Pretty, colorful, tasty. And if you put a picture of these on your Instagram, you're going to get so many likes. My Dr. favorite Pico, do you want to play it again? Macarons are a must. Another thing you have to eat. Not able to restart it. Oh. 
Okay, you can uh, share the link with me. Maybe I could play it. All right, that's. I think we're good to go. especially the bread as you saw the first one the long baguette that's what we call it baguette is very crispy and hard from outside but very soft from inside and it is one of the speciality and the oldest bread of uh, france uh, the croissant the second one that you saw is also uh, eaten by almost every french if not every day every weekend and every day they take baguette uh, macarons, we all know, and I think kids especially love macarons. Uh, La Dure is one of the best uh, uh, macaron making organization in France. They have their install mission, installments, installations everywhere in Paris, at the airport, in different cities from where you can buy. They are very expensive. Uh, it costs you almost uh, 90 rupees or 100 rupees for ma one macaron, but it's worth it. So if you go there, you have to try eating. Snails that you saw at the end, how we eat snails also is a very different experience altogether. So those who are vegetarian are going to uh, be disappointed because most of the French delicacies are non-vegetarian. So, but don't worry now, French is also moving towards vegan and they have started to introduce at least two dishes in uh, two vegetarian dishes in every restaurant. So I am a vegetarian and it was a very different experience in the beginning because when we go to the restaurant and we tell them we don't eat eggs, we don't eat fish and they were like, okay, what do you eat then? What can we get you? They didn't have any option to offer to us. And in the name of soup, uh, when you go to the restaurant, you would prefer a tomato soup or a sweet corn or... Uh, I don't know what would you ask for, but don't imagine getting these soups in France. If you were tell them you want a tomato soup, you will, they will not even understand that exists because for them, tomato is only a juice that you get in glass and it's cold, it's not soup. So for soup, you have onion soup and you have pumpkin soup that you can get in France. So this was all about uh, food. I'll go back to my PPT. I would like to share that with you once again. So here we are with our food items that we just saw, what all you can eat in France and Ratatouille you saw, macarons you saw, uh, the video we have already seen. Let's talk about fashion because we call Paris the city of mod. Mod is the French word and uh, you know about the French perfumes also which are very famous. Uh, there's one thing which I would like to share with you and it's very unique which I found in French fashion is that you don't see two people wearing similar kind of cloth in Paris. You just go there 
and it will be hard for you even if you are looking for two people with similar clothes you won't find uh, this is amazing i don't know why they do it how they do it because in india if there is one thing in trend everybody seems to be wearing similar clothes or you know with different colors but the same style but there is not one style in paris and that's why probably this is called the city of fashion city of mod because everybody has their own style everybody has their own way of dressing uh look at these four girls for example you know they're all wearing different style clothes and they're all dressed up differently is the case with everybody in paris everybody everybody not just in paris i would say in france also they'll have different shoes they'll have different jackets different coat coats and bags and nothing would match from one to another uh, different styles altogether and then perfumes uh, you are using probably the french perfumes because they are used by everybody all around the world chanel dior uh, uh, yves saint laurent i don't know you know about this one but chanel numero 5 is number 5 chanel is famous and everybody uh, must have heard of it if not used uh, so you saw that france is between tradition and modernity this is the first thing which i told you about so if you talk about paris the fashion city if you talk about the internationally branded perfumes if you talk about the variety of french cuisine it looks like the modern city which has everything a completely international experience giving it giving to you but on the other hand it has also something which is attached to tradition and i would like to tell you about that through this video that you will see just now and look at this experience of traditional france look at this dance it's a traditional dance form which is called boule and dates from i don't know how many years around 400 500 years but still in practice in some festivals in some events being organized you can still see women dressed in that way and especially with their headwears and dancing in a typical french way so that's why i said in the beginning that the speciality of france is that it has moved on towards modernity but it has not left the tradition behind see how uh, how villageois style that we call in french is this dance and takes you back for about 300 400 years but difficult to realize that even today you can see this in france which is done you don't see a lot of body moving but it's the foot which is moving in one particular direction a lot of places which are called squares in india also we call them squares which are huge plain areas uh, surrounded by buildings around but in the middle there is nothing and all the festivals are organized in these squares where throughout the night they are dancing the couples are dancing and the dance is typical french dance so uh, if you get to attend one of these events this is the best experience ever uh, to see french people dancing in similar ways so we are going to end it here because it's kind of similar dancing and i move back to my ppt Yes so this was about dance and i would also like to show you uh, i don't know if you can see can you see this doll look yes. at the headgear look at how there is this small bag how the dress is this is a doll from marseille marseille is in the south of france so this is not just a doll this is how people used to dress up in france in 18th century in marseille so uh, 
this gives you an idea because Marseille is at the port. It's a seaside. You see this, this girl is collecting crab and fish in her uh, small bucket, uh, cap type bucket here. Uh, I have another one to show you. Look at this one. This is styled differently. Look at the hat. It's pointed towards top. It's different from this headgear. So different regions have different headgears. So people don't wear them today, uh, but earlier women used to dress up like this. The fashion has evolved a lot from long dresses with headgears to short dresses and then the tight dresses. Then it moved back again to long dresses. Uh, so this is uh, looking at the headgear, we cannot tell, but the French people will look at the headgear and tell you from where it belongs. So uh, this is very important, you can see. Moving on to, again, our slides. Uh, we are going to next talk about uh, the importance of French in India. What does French have to do, France uh, have to do with India? And uh, you know about the history of French in India, that they arrived in India in 1664, about 50 years after the British arrived, and they left in 1954. So when they left in 1954, that means they spent some 290 years in India. So you can imagine that having spent 290 years in India, they must have left some good impact as well as bad impact on people. So they had their five colonies that you see here in the picture. They have Mahe, Karikal, Pondicherry, Yanan, and Chandranagar. Uh, these were the five colonies they were having uh, until uh, the French, uh, the British took over the rest and only they were left with Pondicherry at the end. So we got independence in 1947, but even after the independence, the French continued to be there in India until 1954. It was only in 1954 that a pact was signed between India and French, Indian and French, that in French had to leave India and they had to leave Pondicherry in the hands of Indian government. And at that time, Pondicherryans were given a choice to accept either the French nationality or Indian nationality. Uh, they had a choice. Why they had a choice? Because they were with French people for almost 300 years. If they were with French for almost 300 years, they have learned French culture. They had got French education. Everything that they had experienced was French, their forefathers, everything. In that case, how come all of a sudden they could be shifted to Indian culture, Indian way of education? So to avoid this, they were, to avoid any kind of confusion, they were given this choice of either shifting to France and accepting French education, uh, French nationality, or continue to stay in India and accept your Indian nationality. Many were confused because uh, we were fortunate at that time that the French franc was lower than Indian rupees and we were not very sure about the future of France because they, they were defeated by British and they had lost in many other wars. So people were confused whether they should go to France or they should stay here. So some chose to be in France and that's why you have so many Pondicherians in France today and some accepted to stay in India. And Pondicherry that's why is still uh, it has the French feel because 300 years of French, it is French who built Pondicherry all together. The police still wears that uh, French cap uh, in Pondicherry, if you see. And you have education also given in French even till date. Now, as I said that the French were here, so the first they left a good impact on French Indian people. So we have famous personalities who were trying to own and we probably don't even know about them. Raja Ramohan Roy, uh, he had visited France himself. He was inspired by this French revolution. Uh, Toru Dutt had written in French. Tagore family, we all know about. Not Rabindranath Tagore, but his brother Jyoti Rindranath Tagore had written extensively in French language. Sri Aurobindo, we know about production also in Pondicherry. He spoke French and he could read and write French. Swami Vivekananda had spent his uh, last many years in France and he has uh, learned French in France, uh, made many friends. Uday Shankar, Ravi Shankar, the brothers, musician brother, singer brother, dancer brother, they have learned their art in France. Amrita Shergil, who is a known famous painter, has learned in Paris. J.R.D. Tata, we know from Tata, 
companies uh, was born from a French mother and Indian father, and he's born in France. So all these people, eminent personalities, they have been inclined towards French language because French was the language of elite. It was language of literature. It was language of culture. So they wanted to break this uh, uh, supremacy of English language and move towards something which was more cultural. And that is why their interest in language, uh, they show by reading literature, by learning language. So this is how French was developing in India through these elite. Moving on to this French language, is it easy to learn? What is the origin of this language? So, but French language um, is originated from Latin of Roman Empire. So initially it was uh, uh, just few words were taken from Latin and changed. Uh, and slowly and gradually in France, people started speaking different dialects of this uh, uh, Gallo-Roman gallo romance language that we call it because it was spoken in Gaul and from where it came to us. Um, and then uh, government realized that this is not the way we will be able to develop our language because everybody is speaking its dialect. What to teach in school? What language to be taught in school? Then in French, we call it l'Académie Française. In English, it will be French Academy. The role of French Academy is to develop French language, to create its dictionary. So they decided that the language which is spoken in Paris will become the language of instruction. So that is how the different regional dialects disappeared from the administrative uh, path, disappeared from the educational path. They remained still in the country. If you go to the south, you will see people speaking a little differently. If you go to no north, people will speak differently. But one common language of instruction that remains is Paris. Um, is what is speak, spoken in Paris. It, this was decided by l'Académie Française. But the first French document, the first document which appeared in French language was also from 842. So it's long, it's not something recent. It has been there since long, since long. But one official language of France, it is recent in 1992 that we decided to make one language as the uh, language of the instruction that is in 1992. Now, uh, there are five C of French language, which I'd like to talk about, is that language learning is not just about going to a country and discovering it. It's a language of communication, of course, because when you go to a country, you want to speak to people in that language. It's a language of career, it's a language of curricular, culture, and curiosity. The five C are important. If you really want to know about a culture, if you know about, want to know about civilization, you need to speak their language to get delve inside to deep go deep inside what they think what they believe how they practice um career wise i would like to emphasize more because a lot of people want to know that why I learn french language so french is not just for speaking with the people of the area but it's also in your professional era that it helps you many students probably ask you that i don't want to go to france i don't want to continue my studies in france either uh, and i don't want to become a french teacher then why should i learn french why should i go ahead and take french so this is what is your answer to them that whether they are doing engineering, whether they are doing medicine, whether they are doing commerce, whether they want to go to journalism, whether they want to do uh, jobs in BPOs or embassy, everywhere learning French is an asset. Talking about, first of all, aeronautics. So a lot of people are interested in aeronautical engineering these, these days. So the best aeronautical industry you will find in France that is in Toulouse, that you don't have to know French and go to France. You can know French stay anywhere in India and still create more opportunities for you because that country is dealing in aeronautics with France. Then if you talk about automotive engineering or mechanical engineering, we have the best brands in France. Uh, people are interested in banking and finance. You don't have to go to France. Even in India, we have French banks. We have BNP Paribas where you can get uh, better jobs if you know French uh, languages. So this becomes an asset. If you talk about international trade, journalism, media, luxury goods, hotel industries, BPOs, teaching, everywhere, uh, French becomes an asset for these students. And moreover, all the international organization, for example, UN, 
we have who everybody is talking about who right now and we have uh, olympics fifa all these or international olympic organization all these organization have their official language the second official language as french so uh, not just going to france it takes you to the international diplomatic world this is the benefit of learning french language now is french language difficult to learn how is it can we can anybody learn it i chose to put this cock here because cock is the symbol of france because gaulois as i said is their origin and gaul we used to call the cock also in the beginning and that's why france has chosen le cock as their symbol so see you look at the alphabets here they're all same as english so why french is easier than any other language let's say mandarin or let's say japanese or korean it is easier because the origin is from indo romanic languages it is from latin language so you have the same alphabets as english so if you know english it is easier for you to learn to write in french language it's just that the pronunciation is different you don't say a you say a you don't say b you say b you don't see c you say c so the pronunciation is different but alphabets are still the same but what is different then english is the accents now you look at the picture here this is a typical french picture where you have wine in one hand baguette in the other hand and snail there and the striped shirts this is a cliche and look at the hat also that the person is wearing this is a cliche about french people that they are always they look like this and they eat this they drink wine and they eat snail and this is their appearance altogether so not true just a cliche so what about accent what do you mean by accents you see this uh, small little uh, dot kind of a structure on a and e and i and u and c these are accents now uh, you can compare them to matras in hindi but there is a difference between matras and accents what is the difference matras uh, you put them as per your choice when you see that you know you want to say a you put that matra of a you want to say o you put matra of o you want to say u you put matra of u in french these accents also have similar sound they have sound of a a but you cannot put them according to your need they already exist on some words and you have to learn the spelling of, of those words just with the accent so this is one major difference that we have so students um, find this a little weird that how come they have sound and we cannot use them as per our need we cannot they already exist on the words and the spelling is to be learned like that only but you know there is one thing which i'd like to tell you that you all here whether you have learned french before or not you all know french already and you will agree with me here look at the first word rsvp i'm sure all of you have heard of this word rsvp have you or have you not so yes yeah, so rsvp means répondre s'il vous plaît it's in french rsvp répondre s'il vous plaît reply please so all the invitations card invitations that you get on the card you see rsvp written at the bottom and then you have the contact number so rsvp is from france it is the french version which says répondre s'il vous plaît reply please look at the next one déjà vu it's in movies we talk about it in newspaper we use this word déjà vu is already seen it's a french word then grand which in english we say grand it's a french version of grand grand in french and grand wow. english grand and then elite elite is elite in english and elite class that we talk about elite is also a french word adieu adieu you have seen this in movies where hero is saying adieu to his uh, uh, girlfriend and they promise that they are not going to meet ever again so adieu yes it means uh, to fare bid to someone to fare goodbye to someone and it's a french word or oh, the toilettes that you see almost on all your perfumes that you buy whether it is a french perfume or it is not you will be able to see this expression or oh, toilettes uh, on your perfume aperitif aperitif is aperitif 
in English is the same word, aperitif. In French, we call it aperitif. So uh, the starters has come from France. Faux pas. Faux pas is a word which is used very frequently in the fashion industry. When they want to talk about a heroine and they want to talk about her dressing sense and they, they want to say that this is not, she shouldn't have done, this is not going well. She shouldn't have uh, done that. She shouldn't have worn that. It is a faux pas. Faux pas is not to be done. So in French, in this expression faux pas, you see that in fashion industry used very often. Aviation is a word that we use in English. It is not an English word. Aviation is a, is a word from French because aviation industry is from France, from Toulouse is the city of aviation industries. Ballet, the ballet dance that we talk about, it's a French word. Cabaret, cabaret has originated from France, of course. You have heard about Moulin Rouge, the red mill, Moulin Rouge. I think it's a name which is used in movies also. Moulin Rouge is a very famous French cabaret which is situated in different parts. But in the one in Paris near Sacré Coeur is the most famous. You see the woman dancing concon. Concon in English is can can dance in red, beautiful. Uh, dresses and again this is a dance where you have to lift your leg to as high as possible so cabaret is a french word and chauffeur we use this word very frequently you know the chauffeur hasn't come or the chauffeur is taking the, the car today the so chauffeur means driver in french is also a french word so you already know french it is already there with the language that you're read, reading or the language that you're speaking but Today, we can also try and speak few words. Uh, good morning when we say in French or hello, we say bonjour. Would you like to repeat it with me? Yes, we can ask the participants to unmute themselves, uh, Dr. Preeti. Yeah. Just a small thing that I, until such time that participants are unmuting themselves, yeah. we have Roshni who's already ready. So Roshni, you'll get your turn. I need to clarify something. Uh, so there is this uh, yeah. Matthew, you said, which means uh, that you are you bid farewell and you the person is just not going to meet you again is it something yes. like that yes uh, yeah and that's forever so there is another word which means see you soon yes that is abiato. Abiato. Oh, so usually people miss uh, look at uh, adieu because adieu is actually used when you are saying goodbye and you're not going to meet again yes. but if you're just saying goodbye then it is au revoir or okay. if you're going to say, see you soon, then this is abianto. Abianto oh, yes. and arua is goodbye. But adieu is goodbye forever. So let's not say adieu to anybody here. No, it's, <laughs> it's very, yes, yes. Thank you so much. That was such an insight because it's so wrongly used. Otherwise, yes, adieu. We're not going to say then, adieu. We are going right, to say right. arua or abianto. So bonjour is uh, used to say good morning and hello as well. So bonjour can be used at any point of day uh, during the whole day. And then we have je m'appelle. So anybody can try is je m'appelle. Je m'appelle. Je m'appelle. Yes, it's very easy. Je m'appelle. Bonjour and je m'appelle. Yes, bonjour yeah. and je m'appelle. Bonjour. Bonjour, yes. We have Tanav. We have Tanav. Uh, Udelia, we have Udelia. You would you like to try something, Udelia? Uh, yes. Bonjour, je m'appelle Udelia. Very nice. Yes. Oh. Bonjour, je m'appelle. Pretty. Okay. Okay. And then we have merci. Merci is thank you. But you want to say thanks a lot, then you add word beaucoup to it, and you say merci beaucoup. Je m'appelle. Bonjour, je m'appelle. And then if you are ending the speech, you are saying merci or merci beaucoup. And the last one is au revoir. That's a tough one. Au revoir. You would like to try somebody probably. Au revoir. Au revoir. Yes, that is right. Au revoir. Au revoir is goodbye. Au revoir. Au revoir. Yeah, that's one expression I never got. <laughs> I <tried. laughs> yes, it's not I it's, it's absolutely not easy to say this. It's not easy. Arua. Yes, Arua. 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 Arua is goodbye. And yes, it's a tough one. But abianto is easy. You can always say Abianto. A and Bianto. Abianto is uh, see you soon. So this is how the French language is not very tough. You can see it here that 
especially for Indians, it is easy to speak because it has many spoken uh, sounds, soft spoken sound that do not exist in English. So English speaking people uh, speak French weirdly because they cannot say the, they will only say the. So when it is the, it is easy for us to say because we have the also and we have the also, so we can pronounce both of them correctly. But That's for English speaking insane. people, yeah. it is very difficult for them. Similarly, her and fur, we, we can say both, but the French English people cannot say both. So there are so many sounds, t and th, that is another sound that people cannot say in English speaking countries. So Indian have an asset here also that our Hindi language is uh, so flourished that it allows us to speak any language with ease because we have soft consonants also and we have hard con consonants as well. So it becomes easier for us to learn French language. So here it is all that uh, French language is not at all difficult to learn first of all. Secondly, it is not just about going to France or interacting with people. It opens up gates to opportunities in all domains, which I mentioned here also, whether you're talking about engineering, whether you're talking about medicine. I did not mention about medicine. Those who want to become a doctor, there is an organization called Médecins Sans Frontières. Uh, in English, it will be Doctors Without Borders. So this organization is taking people from all over the world. And this is a worldwide organization. So that's why I say that French does not just take you to France. It takes you to any domain you want to. It opens up the doors to opportunities. And it's a language of uh, culture as well. If you want to learn about a beautiful culture, a beautiful civilization, this language allows you to do that. So if you have uh, any question, I would like to end the discussion here and open uh, the round for discussion, any discussion you want to do about or anything you want to ask me about uh, French language or French culture, I'll be happy to answer. So Dr. Preeti, I'm beginning to wonder if adios in Spanish means the same. <laughs> yes. It does. Adios. Sir. But they use it to say goodbye also. Okay. So that way. Uh -huh. So that's you know, quite a clarity word, you've given us. This word is made up of A and Dieu. Dieu is God. And A is to God. That means we'll meet now, finally, oh. <laughs> uh, when everything is over. But uh, when we say au revoir, that means revoir means to see again. So till we see again. So that's why I said I prefer au revoir to adieu. <laughs> it's really insightful. I think it's such a wrong uh, usage of a uh, little knowledge that we have. But honestly, this lit fest uh, just not fair because every time I listen to an, a new language, I feel I want to learn. I thought I would learn Spanish. Now I feel like going ahead with French. Uh, yesterday was Mandarin. That was so interesting and you know engaging. I really felt even that could be learned. But yeah. Uh, so many varieties and variations we have learned and uh, you, uh, all of you uh, language enthusiasts have made it easier for us to understand any language, you know, even Urdu was something which would go bonkers, but after we heard Urdu, I, I really fell in love with Urdu Shairi, honestly, when somebody would say some Shairi, I would say, please, please, I cannot follow, but you know how easy it was put down to us. So. I am so grateful to the LitFest and uh, for, to all the enthusiasts. And Dr. Preeti, thank you so much for all the historical uh, background that you gave us, even about the Eiffel Tower. It was such an eye-opener. Everyone is uh, you know, talking about it here in the chat. Quite an inspiring session. Yes, um, some of us may have learned French in school and may have learned few things about French, but what the perspective that you gave us has opened a different uh, idea about France, uh, you know. Thank you so much. So yes, uh, uh, anyone who would like to ask questions to Dr. Preeti, if not, um, okay, I'll just give you some I two have minutes. I question here from Renuka, I think how to be pronounced Monsieur. It's not Monsieur because a lot of people pronounce it wrong. It is Monsieur. We, it is written as Monsieur, which means my sir, uh, but it is pronounced as Monsieur. So Renuka, here is the answer to your question. We pronounce Monsieur, which is written as Monsieur, as Monsieur. Uh, how do we pronounce Salut? Salut. 
no t most of the words do not have a, a pronunciation of last letters in french but some do so it's confusing which one has and which one doesn't you have to learn it uh, while you're learning the language so salut is the correct pronunciation merci okay. udaya is there any other question why is there a little jerk in merci and why wouldn't we we just we say merci but why is there a little jerk in merci the way you pronounce the way the french people i uh, know if you will hear some indian they'll say merci only but uh -huh. the way if you want to have the french accent it says merci mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to keep the accent as well mm -hmm. when you speak people should not be able to make out whether it is the indian french accent or the french accent but that comes with time we don't expect indian people to adapt to the accent right now Absolutely. That's yes. Nice. Tanav is asking, "How do we pronounce?" That is Madam. Rendezvous. Yes. Mm -hmm. Rendezvous is again an English word, a French word. Sorry, but we use it very often. Rendezvous is meeting. There was a very famous show, Rendezvous with Simi Garewal. So Rendezvous was first time brought to public by this show, and Rendezvous means meeting. Madam. Then yes, Madam is. Um, to address to people we say sir madam or miss in french we say madame for mrs or madam uh, mademoiselle it's a very cute word i find it very beautiful mademoiselle is for miss and monsieur is for sir wonderful really wonderful i request the participants not to leave i have a little surprise for you towards the end after dr preeti has uh, answered all your queries I Merci think there is no other question. Is R pronounced as her? Uh, yes, R. R is very difficult to pronounce because it comes from the throat. R, uh, frère, for example, uh, beurre, for example, it's not R. It is R. It comes in the air. You don't touch your parts inside while you speak air. So, Ankita, for practicing air, the only possibility is to make a list of the words that have air inside them, not in the beginning, not at the end, and you speak them frequently. And when you speak, you try that your inner parts do not touch. The R sound should go into the air only. So, this is how you can practice the R pronunciation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Throat singing is difficult. <laughs> Beatbox. I think we have that everywhere. <laughs> is there any other question that you would like to ask about anything French culture, French language, literature, anything you want to ask? I love the visuals, the cheese. Yes. Oh my god. Oh, are, as I said, there are more than 350 varieties of cheese. You enter the shop of cheese and you go crazy. You don't know what to taste and uh, what to leave. But uh, it's just amazing. Ayushi has a question. Where can we learn French online? Uh, Ayushi, right now everything is online. So you can learn French anywhere, I would say. But yes, uh, if you are in India, there are two best organizations to learn French. One is um, Alliance Française, of course, because these are the institutions by French Embassy. Uh, and right now they also have classes online. And the other way is to do courses at university. So at university, we have uh, part-time courses also, we have degree courses also. So if you don't want to do a degree full-time course, you can do part-time course, which is like about two hours a day and thrice a week. And Alliance Française, as I said, that would be the best organization because they are by French Embassy and they are a worldwide organization. So you learn here or you learn in any other country, it's going to be the same standard, it's going to be the same curriculum. So uh, this is where you can learn. So does Allianz France have this, uh, is it going on online now, those yes. sessions yes. from them? Yes, okay. all the sessions are going online right now. And what about Prayatna Education, ma'am? Uh... Prayatna Educational Society is not dealing in any kind of classes. We okay. are here to promote French, but also the purpose is to improve learning 
and teaching French language. So to improve learning French language and to improve teaching of French language, what we do is that we create opportunities for teachers and for students. For example, for students, we have international French exams, which are in collaboration with Alliance Française of France. And we also have in collaboration with Quebec government office because Quebec is entirely French uh, culturally rich place. So these international exams we conduct for students. We also conduct exams, international exams for teachers as well, where they can auto evaluate, they can check their self. And we have training session. As I said, I'm a teacher's trainer. We have teachers training program, which are held uh, almost every year in different country, in different cities and country also, I would say. And this year, because everything was locked, we have had uh, uh, eight sessions in the month of July and we trained 800 teachers in one month. And oh. they are free of cost. So anybody can join all the teachers. They don't have to pay anything for these workshops. And to give experience to teachers who have been teaching for years but have never visited France, we have training programs also in France, which we organize for them. And yes. we have educational trips for students. They can go to France, uh, live with the host family, experience the culture, learn French language at Alliance Française. So everything is part of program. They go there, they learn French, they stay with host family, they visit different places. And but they this is not free, right? This is not free. No, this comes with a charge. Yeah, the teacher training is free. And uh, there's someone asking uh, the same question as I had in my mind. Any upcoming workshops for teachers by your organization? Uh, we just finished with eight sessions, but we do have plans for more session next month. So uh, you can log into the Facebook page of Prayat Educational Society. We keep on updating things over there or you can uh, register yourself with us for the mail list. So whenever we have a program, we will send you the details by mail. So it's Prayatna Educational Society. Uh, I'll just put the website address also, if you want to know. And then we have Prayatna Educational Society at the rate gmail.com is the mail address if you want to put facebook pages also for ethnic educational society you can get in touch with us so udelia is asking that i'd be interested in uh, uh, french i'll be interested because she's teaching french so udelia yes of course you can join all these uh, sessions that we conduct and uh, you will get updates on the facebook page or through the mailing list you just have to drop a mail on this and get yourself registered so you will receive all the updates so right now what is going on is the international French exam because workshop we finished last month in July, August, we started with international French exam, which is for students of classes five to uh, five onwards. In fact, students of class 11th and 12th also can participate. So till last year, the first prize was a free trip to France, but this year all travels are uh, closed. So it is the price in the form of money that we are giving to the students. So around 10,000 students participate every year in these exams. Well, oh, that's quite a step in promoting uh, France. I mean, so many um, efforts and, and so many um, opportunities. That's really amazing. Thank you, Dr. Preeti. Um, yes, any more questions uh, from the participants? I think you can, uh, the participants can think about their questions and please allow me to uh, play a few glimpses of the Lit Fest. Yes. Yeah. I just wanted to ask about the YouTube channel uh, that uh, you started in the lockdown. So that, yeah, that uh, I also. I started it only during lockdown. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I was getting a lot. I don't teach to kids. I only train teachers. But uh, I, when I train teachers, I tell them what material they can use with the students or how they can teach so that language becomes an interesting uh, subject to learn and to teach also. So this YouTube channel I had started only to help teachers uh, take the material or take up the content for the classroom, which is uh, French by Preeti Bhutani. And uh, we share the link on the group as well. Yeah. You can share it here as well. Yeah. yeah. So French by Preeti Bhutani, it's a YouTube channel. So you can have lessons, some lessons on grammar topics on this channel, but also some interesting content like the cartoon series that we have launched, which is recent. It's an Indian French cartoon in series made by Indian and for the Indians, but in French. So it's a short series. Every time the first episode is like about three minutes maximum. 
and at the end of the session at the end of the episode you have some vocabulary all the new vocabulary words that the kids learned and then you have question so this uh, episode can be used for teaching french language so we have already launched three such episodes and we also have learning through storytelling so we have stories which we are reciting but with expression and at the end of the story or with the story we have vocabulary and at the end of the story we have comprehension questions which can be used in classroom so content for teachers as well as for students can be found on this channel Beautiful. yes Thank we'll be sharing that because me. it has it has some lovely content and uh, that's a definite share with all our audience participants language enthusiasts yes absolutely thank you so you got to share the uh, glimpses of the lit fest oh yes yes and uh, before that i i would like to uh, thank dr preeti so in french if uh, forgive my uh, pronunciation but yes i'm going to try so my brother had the opportunity to learn french uh, but because he, he was in a convent school but i couldn't pick up that subject because my school did not offer french at that point in time so uh, as we say uh, you know uh, merci beaucoup that's thank you very much is that correct <laughs> merci beaucoup yes and uh, for goodbye we say uh, aruba Aruba. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, Aruba. All right. Yes. So this is something that uh, you know I'm going to be using and getting better at it. Yes. And I'm also going to be exploring um, the workshops that we all offer. So that would also give me the opportunity to uh, learn French, which I always wanted to. Yeah. Definitely, that would be great. <laughs> so then I could de- then then finally I can speak to my brother in French. Yeah. <laughs> Oh it is so amazing yeah. to know a language that people don't understand. Yeah and and he would just show off you know that he knew French and I didn't so yeah. Like I speak to my son in French in front of everybody and we can discuss anything and nobody can <laughs> Exactly. It's yes. Our secret language. Secret language. Wow. Lovely. Thank you uh thank you so much. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Oh, Ms. Rakhi <laughs> i'm waiting for you to give me this the signal so sure. yep. signal yeah yep please go ahead yeah thank right and i would like also like to share the testimonials from some of our teachers who are uh, participants who have shared with us so let's take a look at that as well before we end the session everyone this is roshni anthony i teach at cnm school my subjects are english and history i love to travel and read books 
and that is exactly what THT has done for me and so many others during this COVID times. It has teleported us every day for the past whole week from one place to one other. We've learned so much, so much in music, art, language, culture of all these different places. Amazing speakers like Mr. Bachka, um, Shakil, Ashish Kapadia. Oh, it was uh, a fun-filled journey for all of us. A big, big thank you to all organizers and all guest lecturers, speakers who have um, made our journey through these, this entire week so fruitful, so enjoyable and a memory that will always remain with us. Especially the throat singing. I simply love it. Thank you once more. Bhair Lala. God bless. Hello everybody. Namaste. Adab. Kencho. Hola. It's rightly said that to learn a language is to have a window from which one can look at the world. And here at Litfest, the honorary speakers have inspired me to learn a new language. I am going to learn Spanish. Thank you. Obrigado. Hello friends. It's been an absolute honor to be part of the Litfest organized by THD. The distinguished, effervescent and eloquent guest speakers were a delight as they took us on a riveting journey across various states, regions and countries. This gave us an opportunity to experience the myriad flavors of their food, music, culture and of course language. We also had the privilege of drawing out a few drops from the vast ocean of knowledge that these speakers have. And for me, it has been a personal eye-opener to the beautiful nuances and history of these languages. So, shukriya, thank you, gracias, bayar lala and obregado to Raki and her team at THT for taking up this Herculean task of putting together the Lit Fest. Thank you very much. More power to you. Looking forward to many more engaging sessions in the future. Good luck. Greetings to everyone. Um, if you're listening to this, I'm sure you're enjoying THT Lit Fest as much as I am. So every day I find myself in a different place. Maybe Brazil learning Portuguese or in Spain learning the language of romance, Spanish. I also find myself traversing the lanes of India, unraveling the history of Hindi or Gujarati, Urdu of shires from India or I find myself sitting in a relaxing mood in the mountains of Mongolia listening to throat music. All these things have brightened my evening a lot and I think the, all the thanks goes to THT for bringing the world to us. So I know where I'm going to be at 4 p.m. in the evening. Come join me and attend this lit fest. So at the outset, I would like to uh, say a big thank you to THT for uh, coming up with something like the THT Lit Fest, which I think was a fantastic uh, endeavor. And it was a great experience for me. Uh, being a language teacher, it was a small dip in the vast ocean that is language. And all the phenomenal speakers that you uh, got for us uh, just gave us so much uh, insight into the beautiful uh, languages uh, of the country, the national languages, as well as the global languages. So all in all, it was, um, it was a fulfilling experience and it was a great time. So I would like to thank THT once again and uh, wish you all the best for uh, coming up with something similar for us in the future as well. I, for one, would absolutely look forward to being a part of something like this again. So thank you once again and uh, congratulations. Hello everyone, I am Shruti Vaktania. First of all, I would like to congratulate the THT team for organizing such a wonderful event. Secondly, the speakers. Trust me, each session was very, very informative and enriching. It was a week full of thoughts, week full of new insights, I should say. And at the end, it was just like, you know, when I go for shopping with an empty bag and I, when I come back home, it's, it's a bag full of goodies that I come back with. 
so it's just the same feeling okay and uh, thanks a lot Sheila ma'am of course for introducing me to this one and I would I'll remember this forever thank you hello my name is Honey Ten Teye. I am a resident of the Netherlands, a geography teacher who loves to travel a lot in the summer holidays. I love to indulge in different uh, cultures, to immerse in different cultures, um, as a guest to a different culture. Um, and I found the Lit Festival very, very mind-boggling. It's so easy via Zoom to get to know people from different countries and I like to present a presentation on the Netherlands, Dutch language, Dutch culture uh, in the next session of the Lit Festival. Have a nice day. See you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michelle, for uh, playing those testimonials. It's almost like uh, we don't want to say bye and we don't want to end the lift fest and we don't want to end the learning. Of course, learning goes on, but uh, it's just that uh, the kind of bond that we have established over a period of eight days learning together and we almost felt like we have traveled the whole world together. So, uh, yes, so all I can say is that uh, until we plan some, uh, something exciting, uh, please stay tuned. Uh, please uh, follow and like our uh, Facebook page, which is in the same name, uh, Teachers Help Teachers. And uh, we have a YouTube channel where we are live right now. And uh, Disha, you can end the YouTube live right now as we end the session. And uh, please share uh, with your fellow teachers about... Uh, THT, they can become a part and we, we all can continue the learning process together. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Rocky. Thank you, one and Thank all. you, everyone. Yeah. In case there's uh, anyone who would like to share something before the session ends, you can please unmute yourself. Yeah. It's Roshni here. Yeah. I'd just hi, like Roshni. to say hi. I'd just like to say that we are going to miss you guys terribly, man. It's like we made friends already, <laughs> especially uh, you, Rakhi, and Shaila, both of you. We've seen you every day for more oh, than an hour. Uh, you would have seen us yeah, if, had it, if it hadn't been the support of our entire team. So I think it, yeah. it's, it's, it's for all of us together that we've done it within a, uh, within a span of uh, three weeks. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but uh, thank you so much. Actually, when our school gave our names, we cribbed about it because we're already so busy with so much of school work. But this has been such an amazing experience. And uh, we are waiting forward to you people, you know, organizing something similar in the near future, not far away in the near future. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Shaila, especially you, uh, we have seen yes. you. Uh, and you've been the face for the Lit Fest. Yes, yes, thank you so much once again. The most welcome. Thank you, Roshni. Thank you, Roshni. Uh, Raki and Shaila, Philomena here. Yes, um, hi, Philomena. As Roshni rightly said, looking forward to um, more programs like this and uh, looking forward to learning more. And uh, yes, we have got used to seeing you both uh, every evening. So our evening starts with you. And, uh, we appreciate all Thank the you. effort that you have put in. Uh, God bless and may you do much better in all your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Palomina. And I think Dr. And, Preeti uh, needs to take, yes, take leave. So thank you, Dr. Preeti. And uh, it wouldn't have been possible without our partners. Uh, we have uh, Ye China. We have, uh, of course, Prayatna. That's my little one. <laughs> Prayatna Education Society, and uh, also it uh, it it it's uh, immensely the the entire team that has worked towards it. So uh, I think it wouldn't have been possible to have this whole thing together. So yep. Hello. Yes, Renuka. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Rakhi and uh, Shaila. You know, it was such a, such a, I would say joyful journey, journey for me because learning uh, languages, you know, is not something very easy and I love learning languages, but I always all, all felt, you know, learning foreign languages will be very difficult. 
I love learning Indian languages. So now this is one, you know, like breakthrough for me. So and I'm considering learning Spanish very, I mean, seriously as such. So probably next time when we meet, I'll be able to speak lines, you know, not just words, but some sentences maybe. <laughs> That's what, so I'm motivated. And you all have motivated me. Thanks a lot. God wow, bless wonderful. you. Wonderful. Yes, we Great all are motivated work. as well to bring to you more work. and more Great wonderful work. opportunities. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, yes, please follow us and please help us uh, reach out to schools to take this Lit Fest to schools uh, for the next Lit Fest too, because I think the amount of sharing and the knowledge that has uh, been shared, uh, it becomes important for our students to experience the same as well. So do put in a word for us and uh, hopefully we should be there sure, sure. Uh, with the schools. Yeah, we'll definitely do it. Thank you. God bless you. And in uh, LitFest 2, we have some languages which we are proposing. Raki, do you want me to spill the beans just a little? <laughs> uh, I think let the suspense, uh, you know, prevail till we are absolutely prepared. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Fine. Thanks to Thank you. Yes. So I don't feel like ending the meeting, Bye. but I need to. <laughs> Bye. Okay, Ms. Disha, if you could end the meeting because you are the host, I'm not the host. We need to end the YouTube live. Raki, you are the host now.